Hello, I'm Teresa Shaw and I'm a classically trained singer with many years experience performing at an international level. I've worked as a singing teacher for over 20 years and in the last five years I've became an associate lecturer at Chichester University where I deliver performance technique and repertoire classes as well as one-to-one -one singing tuition. I developed an interest in music performance anxiety partly due to my own experience in this and also through observing the struggles of my students in performance-based classes. Hello as well, I'm Dr. Dave Funkos. I'm a clinical and performance psychologist in private practice in Philadelphia. In my clinical work, I have training in newer mindfulness and acceptance-based therapies, one of which we'll talk about today, that is ACT, which stands for Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. In addition, I also research the effectiveness of ACT in treating music performance anxiety. I've done a few articles um, in that vein. Uh, also quickly share, I'm co-authoring an ACT-based self-help book for musicians that's due out in 2021. And I am on faculty with a voice workshop in the UK where I provide lectures on MPA. And I also train singing teachers to do this very work. So my work in performance masterclasses with undergraduates at levels four, five and six led me to observe that a number of each class showed a marked tendency to avoid performing in this context. So I undertook a small survey to try and ascertain the degree to which MPA was impacting on the willingness of students to participate in these classes. A small number of the stats are shown on these slides. So 81.4% were anxious when thinking about singing in class. 96.4% were anxious about singing to a group of their peers. 50% were anxious about singing to an anonymous audience and 53.5% felt they'd become more anxious since coming to university. Of course, the, truck, the crux of this from my teaching perspective is that singers can be significantly distressed by the somatic symptoms of MPA. Uh, and echoing what Teresa had observed in her students and, and kind of considering the way MPA is treated in general, she and I believe that there's a need for an alternative model in treating MPA. So we've outlined two arguments, if you will, uh, in these first two bullet points, why we feel this way. Firstly, as many of you probably intuitively know, MPA is more prevalent among students than professional musicians. And the thinking really is uh, students just lack the same experience that professionals do at performing in elite uh, levels, at elite levels. And I've listed two studies here using um, uh, Amer American and Norwegian samples of music students. And the first has the prevalence of high or problematic MPA at 20%, whereas the second has it at 35%. So somewhere in between 20 and 35 is where students are with their levels of problematic MPA, whereas 15 to 25% of professional musicians uh, show problematic levels of MPA. And in researching ways to treat it, uh, we uncovered some potential hurdles here. According to Diana Kenny, a uh, world leading expert on treating MPA, she is a professor of psychology and music at the University of Sydney in Australia. She rightfully asserts that psychotherapy is considered best practice, in particular CBT, when it uses exposure uh, for treating MPA. However, uh, a lot of hurdles exist that prevent students from seeking help uh, with psychotherapists. One such hurdle that we'll uncover in our work with the student was the stigma of being a, a patient in therapy. That is a big hurdle for a lot of people. And also there's more practical hurdles such as lack of access to trained practitioners or lack of time. And according to leading researchers in the UK, students may even prefer consulting with their teachers on matters related to MPA or performance in general. So we believe uh, there may not be a need to continue outsourcing this work to um, mental health therapists and instead training music teachers directly so they can do the work directly with their students may help to overcome some of these hurdles. So before jumping into discussing the work we had done with the student, I'll just give a brief overview of ACT and also the work that I've done in using ACT with MPA. So ACT is a mindfulness and acceptance-based psychotherapy uh, whose goal actually is not to reduce MPA like CBT and others' goal is. Rather, it's to promote flexibility in the presence of MPA. By flexibility, we mean, you know, through mindfulness and acceptance, one lessens the struggle with their own internal distress, in this case, MPA, and can then behave kind of more flexibly in the presence of those unwanted symptoms. So that really is the main goal of ACT. Uh, ironically, symptom reduction can and usually does occur, but it's not the direct aim. Uh, ACT, ACT is already shown to be an efficacious way of treating social anxiety disorder, uh, which MPA is actually a part of. It's part of the same diagnostic profile according to the DSM 2013 version. 
So we've reason to believe that it would help musicians with MPA, and that's what led me to do the research I've done. I've worked with a rock drummer, I've worked with a student violinist, I've also worked with seven student vocalists in the 2017 paper there. Um, oops. All uh, received ACT delivered individually by myself. And then some colleagues of mine uh, in Australia have since replicated my 2017 paper delivering ACT in group format. Uh, in addition, some of you may be wondering why ACT as opposed to other modalities that teachers could be trained in like Alexander Technique or maybe hypno hypnosis, et cetera. The thing about ACT that can be helpful is no certification is required. It's already been used also with athletes at the workplace to enhance work performance and with undergraduates and other populations. And when used non-clinically, it's called ACT coaching as opposed to ACT psychotherapy. So um, for my master's course in vocal pedagogy, I was required to undertake a work-based study for a dissertation. And I'd been fortunate to already be in contact uh, with David to explore ACT in more detail. And I decided to undertake a study into the effectiveness of acceptance commitment coaching in order to alleviate MPA. And David undertook to supervise my study and train me in the ACT processes for the purposes of the coaching program. And that started in June 2019. So using the acceptance, acceptance and commitment coaching distinctive features book by Dr. Joe Oliver and John Hill, I was able to put together a succession coaching plan having uh, selected a suitable volunteer subject from the undergraduate body at Chichester. So the coaching was supervised by David and he carefully monitored my work during the course of the study and advised on ACT techniques as we progressed, um, uh, making sure that it suited Toby, the subject in, in the uh, study. We monitored his progress using ACT-based questionnaires and we uh, administered these at the beginning of the project at the midpoint and then again at the end of the coaching to see what progress he'd made. So let's talk more about the student that Teresa had worked with. We gave him a pseudonym of Toby to protect his privacy. At the time he was a 19 year old male um, music theater student at her university. And another way that Teresa was trained to be of help to him in addition to ACT coaching was to detect problematic levels of MPA in Toby. And uh, the way that I've trained her to do this is to look for multiple symptom categories and the logic is simple. If someone has, uh, the more symptom categories they have, the more problematic the MPA is, just put it that way. Uh, so he was shown cognitive symptoms like fear or worry of making mistakes, uh, physiological arousal symptoms before and during his performances, uh, behavioral symptoms, and I've broken them into categories as well. You have avoidance behaviors as well as anxious behaviors. If they can't avoid, they just endure anxiously. And he was showing uh, clear signs of overt or visible avoidant behaviors. For example, he was avoiding auditioning for roles in musicals. He also avoided singing in front of his classroom peers. So when someone has overt avoidance in addition to those other symptoms, uh, it's, it's very suggestive of problematic MPA. Add to that the fact that he was very distressed or bothered by having MPA. So he was checking off all the boxes there. And Teresa rightfully spotted that in him. Speaking to the hurdles that we addressed earlier, Toby was also greatly opposed to being in psychotherapy for his MPA, but he felt more comfortable working with Teresa in the coaching module here. Uh, and the research question we attempted to answer was simply this, can Teresa, a singing teacher without education or training in therapy, achieve the same result with Toby as I've achieved with the uh, seven vocal students that I treated with ACT psychotherapy when Teresa is trained uh, by me in a brief ACT coaching intervention? So these are some of the elements that were incorporated into the study. The level seven coaching qualification was actually undertaken as part of my MA. So I'd already been trained as a coach um, to do this work. Um, we use techniques from the Hill and Oliver book, as I mentioned earlier, and they actually outline a six session coaching plan, which we used as a basis and then adapted for the purposes of the study. And we also used some uh, techniques from uh, David's forthcoming book, uh, which is listed here um, to help Toby. Uh, the six session model, as I say, was outlined and um, we used these self-reporting measures before and after the coaching. So here we have the results of the self-report data. And I'm happy to report they are promising. Toby uh, showed a highly similar pattern of results as the seven vocal students that I'd worked with did. And uh, in a nutshell, he learned to lessen the struggle with his MPA. 
And that wording is specific to outcomes that we typically identify first in ACT-related psychotherapies. And there's two ways to lessen one's struggle with MPA according to an ACT uh, perspective. The first is to disentangle oneself from their MPA-related thoughts. So here we have a measure of fusion or entanglement with one's thinking. And you notice on the left is Toby's graph. Um, on the top left of his graph, he, you'll see he's very highly elevated, which means uh, high scores mean he's highly fused or highly entangled with his anxiety-related thoughts. And the healthy range is uh, demarcated by the area within the er error bars there. So you see by the end of his coaching into the three-month follow-up, he had uh, entered into a more healthy state. This is the same slope that we saw with the seven students on this questionnaire that I'd worked with too. Another similarity um, was that he became more accepting of his MPA-related physiological discomfort. That's the second way to lessen the struggle that one is having with their MPA. So here we have a measure of one's uh, acceptance of phys physical distress. And you'll see, if you look closely, on the left graph, which is Toby's, uh, the far left of the left graph in the beginning, he was at about a 13 on this questionnaire, which is lower than the least accepting student that I had worked with in the beginning of their psychotherapy, which if you look on the left side of the right graph, that uh, red square there is about 17 or so. So uh, less accepting than the least accepting student, then by the end, if you look at the three-month follow-up, he's about equal to the most accepting student that I had worked with. So. His progress is certainly on par with the progress that I had observed in my students. And lastly, we have a measure of flexibility here. Uh, again, if, if one lessens the struggle against their MPA, then they can behave more flexibly in its presence. And this questionnaire measure is kind of general emotional flexibility. It's not specific to anxiety or MPA. I, I'll have you know that Teresa and I and some other colleagues are actually adapting this very famous ACT questionnaire for use with musicians. Uh, stay tuned for that publication next year. Hopefully that will more precisely measure flexibility versus inflexibility with musicians. Um, so you'll see he made progress. Uh, he came down from a higher level of inflexibility. This actually inversely measures inflexibility into a more healthy state of flexibility and maintain that at the follow-up point, just like the students I'd worked with did. So of course, uh, some self-report data is potentially biased. So I instructed Teresa to look for other signs of progress in addition to the self-report data. I'm happy to report that Toby cut down on his overt behavior avoidance, which is another clear sign of progress. And I saw that with my seven students as well. Instead of avoiding auditions, he auditioned for several leading roles and won the role of Amos Hart in Chicago, which was great news. He also volunteered to sing in front of his peers early in the upcoming semester. Uh, he finally, in a semi-structured interview Teresa had given to him, he reported that his thinking had shifted about his anxiety. He was more willing to have it, which is also a shift that I've noticed in the thinking of my students too. So in summary, ACT coaching may be a promising new MPA treatment for use by teachers without training or education in psychotherapy, but I'll jump down to the final bullet point. Obviously more research is needed to confirm this with larger group interventions and maybe um, a multiple baseline uh, methodology to tighten the internal validity, but if effective, Teresa and I believe this may help schools who cannot follow best practice guidelines for MPA treatment due to either the lack of therapists trained in CBT or the lack of psychotherapists in general. I'm happy to report that the article um, uh, that this work went into is, is gonna be published any day now. We have the abstract, which I've visually shown you right here. That's already up on the journal's webpage. The journal is Frontiers in Performance Science. And the full version of the article should be available any day now. You can click on that link to access the abstract though for the time being. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And if you have questions, please feel free to reach us at our emails here on the bottom. Thank you.